Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics, and this is my review of the Hilux CMR4 1-4 optic. CMR4 is a variable magnification optic, uh, one magnification to 4x magnification uh, by 24 millimeter, uh, 30 millimeter main tube, and it the adjustments on this particular model are in MRAD. Um, some people like MRAD, some people don't like MRAD. Uh, there aren't too many MRAD adjustments. At MRAD's graduated uh, one to fours out there, so that's kind of interesting. If you are a big fan of MRAD, if maybe that's what you know, this is definitely an option out there. Uh, it does have an illuminator reticle uh, for those of you who feel like you need something like that. And this particular one uh, has three night vision settings, which um, it's actually pretty cool if you're going to slave this in night vision for hog hunting or, or whatever you plan on using it for. It's nice to have those three night vision settings for that illuminated reticle in, in the event that you need it. Um, as far as one to fours go, uh, most people generally try to shy away from the more inexpensive brands because they feel like if it's going to be graduated glass, if it's going to be magnification glass, if it's going to be variable magnification glass, they want high quality, they want to go with one of those bigger uh, or more well-known brand names. Uh, so when it comes to Hilux, which you know some people aren't even familiar with the Leatherwood Hilux brand, uh, they tend to stay away from it because they equate those to those uh, big box store brands that you can you know pick up for like 70, 80 bucks or maybe those flea market optics that you see that just don't uh, hold up very well. So I wanted to get a hold of one of these and just see how it does. Now I am not a one to four fan. Uh, I prefer red dots just because of the, the nature of uh, pretty much everything, almost everything I've ever done with this particular rifle system. Uh, now the bolt gun, obviously I'm going to use a, a magnified, magnified optic, but when it comes to the AR platform, I've always gone red dot because red dot gave me, uh, it did everything I needed to do and there weren't as many disadvantages inherently built into the system as there can be. Uh, it, with the use of a Wonder 4 or any magnified optic on the AR platform. So I do come into looking at any one to 4 for the AR platform kind of with a raised eyebrow, but uh, my experience, recent experience with the Hilux uh, Micromax B dot, their red dot sight, uh, I came away pretty positive with that. So I wanted to see if I'd get the same impression from their one to 4 variable magnification optic. For the for the technical specifications of the CMR4, I'll go ahead and put them on the screen now. Um, but for the review process, I put it on my, uh, my PWS, uh, my Mark I, the SD1, the Sage Rifle. Um, during the whole review process, probably got about eh, six, 700 rounds underneath the optic. Uh, first thing I did, obviously, is I wanted to get a good solid zero on it. Uh, it's a one to four, so some people do use the 50, 200 meter zero. Uh, I prefer, just because it's a graduated optic, I'm gonna go ahead and use that 100 meter zero, uh, which is gonna give you the best performance in the, the you're going to have to do the, le the least amount of math on the BDC reticle. Uh, so I went ahead and get, got 100 meters zero. I'll go ahead and show you that five round group right now. Now it's 100 meter zero, uh, 4x magnification. Um, you know, I, I bipoded the gun to get it as uh, as accurate as I could, possible as good, which is what you should do for zeroing. Um, it's 55 grain uh, ammo. Uh, in fact, it's 55 grain PMC. Uh, shot my my uh, zeroed and then shot my control group with that. Uh, and then my final group, which uh, which I'll show later in the video, was shot with the exact same ammo. In fact, it was from the exact same box as, as the uh, the actual control group that I just showed you. Uh, throughout the review process, probably fired about 600 rounds, 55 grain. In fact, the exact same ammo, PMC. Um, I use this gun almost exclusively for teaching and for testing the different products. Uh, so it did get knocked around just daily use uh, quite a bit. Uh, but I also deliberately uh, wanted to, to try to affect the zero on the rifle. Um, as you know from other optic reviews I've done, I always try to see if the optic is going to retain zero after taking a catastrophic fall. Uh, again, at this range I don't have a balcony to throw it off of, so I just did a few drop tests. The whole point of the drop test is to build confidence in the product. Uh, now any optic, if it does take a catastrophic fall like this, you should, you definitely should uh, check that zero. Make sure before you take the rifle, especially if you're using the rifle for home defense, self-defense, or duty use, uh, you should definitely take it to a range and confirm that it did not affect the zero. But as you can see from the drops, it did take a, 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 some pretty significant drops. I filmed two of them. I did more than that. Um, obviously, the main point of the drop test, again, 
is to see if I'm going to knock that zero off. Now, the real question becomes, after all that, did those drops affect the zero? Did it affect the zero in a meaningful way? Well, I'll go ahead and show you uh, the last group I fired. Um, in fact, this was right after the, the last drop test, which I did here today. My opinion, 4X magnification, again, I had the gun bipoded, but, you know, 4X 100 meters, pretty good group. I didn't really see a significant zero shift. Now, if I had the ability to ransom the gun down to really sled it down, um, which I, I really need to get one of those, um, then we'd know for sure because I'd be able to remove as much of the human element as possible. Serious temperature difference today, I don't know if that would make a huge deal, uh, but you never know um, because all these things do affect ballistics, especially as distance increases. But as far as zero shift is concerned, uh, after that last drop that I showed you, I would have definitely checked my zero on my gun before I took it to work. But knowing that, you know, worst case scenario, exit circumstances, whatever you want to say, the gun could have taken a fall like that and still been duty ready. It still could have been able to produce results. Now, the thing about the thing about zeros is once you drop the reticle, the reticle is or the zero is both good and bad at the same time. You do not know until you shoot it. Uh, so you have to put a lot of trust in your equipment. And some people are just apprehensive to trust these brands, these newer brands, especially brands like that are made in China. They just don't feel like okay, well, it doesn't have the same name or name notoriety these other brands, so I don't know if I can trust it as much. Uh, I've seen big name optics take you know falls, and they've lost their zero as well. It's, it's, that's why it always goes back to if you have the ability to check your zero, check your zero anytime a fall like that occurs. But as you can see, no meaningful shift. The optic would have been good to go if I had to absolutely use it. But if I had the opportunity after a fall like that, I would have checked my zero before I did anything uh, substantial, meaningful, or used this rifle for any kind of duty or personal offense use uh, without checking that zero. Eye relief is something that always comes up one to fours. Eye relief, eye relief, eye relief, eye relief. Uh, I am a... This is one of the biggest reasons why I don't really care for one to force over red dot sights is that eye relief issue. I don't want to have to, to swim to remove that shadow. I want to be able to snap into the rifle, my, my preferred position, and every single time I'm going to be shadow free. That's all based on eye relief, but it's also based on how generous the eye relief is because I can make adjustments on the body of the optic, move it back forth as I, as when I set it, when I mount it, to reduce eye relief at my, my preferred stock position. But the eye relief has to be generous enough forward and back on all settings that I don't spend a significant amount of time when I snap into the rifle swimming and trying to kill that scope shadow. Eye relief on this one, especially on the one to the one to three setting, really generous. Didn't feel like I had to swim for it very much. On the four setting, you're you're plus or minus an inch, really really close. Uh, again, not a huge issue because the higher the magnification. Uh, the more precise your head placement needs to be in, in relation to eye relief because that's just the way optics work. Um, so as far as eye relief goes, um, this one definitely gets a pass. I feel like that there are some, there are some other optics out there that are, that are twice as expensive that don't have as generous of an eye relief. So I really did appreciate that. Uh, some cons I don't particularly care for. Um, minor things, just personal preference really. I don't like the zero lock system. Uh, I feel like it's overly complicated compared to other turret systems that have that lockdown ability. Uh, I have to remove these two screws uh, and then I have to reset and I have to be very particular in the way that I turn the turret in order to get it reset correctly and then I've got to set it back down, put the screws back in and play with it. If the scope is seriously out of uh, BDC, maybe you buy it secondhand or something like that, uh, battle zero or whatever you want to call it, center zero, uh, you are going to have some some little bit of frustration when it comes to readjusting these turrets. Now, once you get it where you want it and you lock it down, free range of motion, everything works fine. Uh, you've got very tactile adjustments. There's no big deal there. Um, but that that particular system is one I don't like when compared to other turrets I've used, especially exposed turrets I've used in the past, where I just have to do a, a, a conscious upward pull. Uh, and twist and then reset. I find that system to be much better than this one. But of course, there may have been patent issues or any other number of reasons of why they went with this two-screw system. Um, second thing is your foxtail. 
your actual ring adjustment, uh, you got to break it in. Uh, you really do. Now, once you've got 15, 20, 30, 40, I don't know how many it's going to take revolutions on this thing, uh, it, does, it does tend to move a little freer. But when I'm in shoulder, it is really hard to adjust. I've got to come over the top more than I would like. I can't really just drive it with my thumb without putting a lot of pressure on the optic body itself, which is something I don't like to do. I like to grab the ring itself and just move it. I don't like to have to use the scope body or the rifle itself as leverage to adjust that ring. So that's kind of a, again, personal preference, but it's something I didn't really like. And then, of course, the third thing I didn't really like is reticle brightness, even on max. Can't really see it very well during bright daylight. Again, the whole point of a lit reticle is not bright daylight. The whole point of a lit reticle is in dusk, twilight, darkness conditions. Uh, but some people, myself included, when we use one to fours on the one setting, we like to turn that reticle on so it mimics as much as possible, depending on the reticle, an actual red dot sight. It gives us that bright, high color contrast snap when we come into the rifle from the shoulder so we can use it just like a red dot sight at, at uh, one magnification. Uh, I'd like to see them make that a little bit brighter. But other than that, I don't have anything bad to say about this optic, uh, other than what I've just said. And those aren't necessarily bad things, they're just preference things. There is nothing functionally wrong with the design of this optic system uh, that doesn't go against, again, my own personal opinion. So if you're looking, again, for a really good one to four that's not going to break the bank, that's right there in that budget area, and it's something that maybe you're not really sure on one to four, you want to experiment with a little bit, but you don't want to get into some of those higher end optics or higher priced optics, uh, the CMR is actually a really good choice. Uh, again, I am twice impressed uh, with the uh, with the Hilux optics. Um, not that you know, I, I thought that they were going to be absolute crap because let's be honest, uh, good optics are made all over the world. China is very capable of making them well. Uh, there's some other optics out there made in the uh, People's Republic that have proven that. Um, I do prefer things made in America or things made in Sweden or things made in Switzerland um, when it comes to optics, but. As far as one to fours go, I think this one comes in right there as an inexpensive quality choice or something that you could use for duty use, uh, home defense, or just as a range gun. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.